Over the last weeks, we have learned a lot of uh, different hyperledger hyper projects and, and, and other uh, blockchain related uh, topics. And now uh, we have reached uh, finally the last chapter of this uh, hyperledger study circle, the fabric part. And uh, we have divided this part into two um, sections. So the first section should be, uh, should be focused on the developer side and the second uh, part will be focused on the uh, administrator part. So for this, now we start with the developer part. And um, since this is the last, uh, the first session uh, about uh, fabric in this series, uh, I will show you today, today a live uh, session, how to install Fabric. Um, and um, if you have time enough, I can give you a short overview about the Fabric samples and uh, how you can start uh, the build your first uh, network as, uh, example and what you can do with this and how is this example organized and so on. Um, yeah. And with this uh, in mind, uh, we, sh could, we should have a solid foundation uh, for, for further examples and, and anybody should have uh, a, running, a running fabric network to study and to learn. And that's the reason why I will uh, first uh, show you the installation. Um, in my example, so can you uh, see my slides and my, uh, my, my terminal here? Yeah. Yeah, so. And when we start, as a, what, what I like to do is now that, we, that I use a uh, digital ocean water uh, to install uh, these favorite examples. And uh, to do so, uh, we need some uh, preparation and uh, we have nine steps to go. So the first three steps um, is a little bit preparation uh, because uh, this is uh, when we use uh, public, uh, public infrastructure as a service provider like uh, DigitalOcean, we have to do a little bit on security. Uh, and um, yeah, I will, I will go in this. And also when you use uh, CouchDB as a stage database, in this environment, you have to take care about your security because the uh, default installation uh, comes with no CouchDB database uh, admin and password, and that would lead to the fact that everybody can access uh, your CouchDB uh, databases, uh, and uh, that what will not be funny, I think so. And so we have to do a little bit uh, uh, preparation. Then we have uh, to do the uh, installation for uh, Hyperledger Fabric. So it's because it's uh, a lot, it's based on Docker. So we have to install Docker, we have to install Docker Compose. Um, and um, for chain code development, uh, we can install uh, Golang and for the uh, client development side, uh, we can install Node.js to get uh, access to the ledger. And with this, uh, if this is ready, we can install the fabric binaries um, and all Docker images um, which we need. And then uh, we can try the uh, build your first network script to show if it's uh, running. And uh, then I will show you what you can do with this. I give you a, a short overview about uh, the example. So, um, um, the first step, what I'm going to do, so I use a digital ocean droplet uh, for this example. So that's um, only my choice. You can do it also in virtual box or you can take another um, infrastructure as a service uh, provider um, of your choice. And um, the first thing I have here, the, I have this droplet here. And the first thing what we have to do is uh, we have to uh, update our system. So, and this is a completely fresh machine. So, and uh, you see this. The reason why I use also uh, DigitalOcean for this example is because this uh, 
DigitalOcean has a good internet connection. So you see this is very fast. Um, and um, I think we need um, in total maybe 20 minutes uh, to install all things and uh, to get started with the examples then. So I think that's uh, pretty fast. And so it's also very uh, cool to play a little bit with these infrastructures and uh, to see how this work and what you can, what you have to do to be secure and so on. Okay, so it takes one minute, I think so. And then I installed some, uh, you know, helper program. So uh, for the moment, I think the only, the only uh, important program is a tree. So that's useful because uh, we can uh, inspect folders, um, folder structures, and that's to look into to look into some folders and see what is in there. And uh, we should also set our time zone because uh, I'm from, from, from Europe, from Austria. So we set our time zone and we can check the time zone. So there's uh, very less to do uh, at this first step. And I think in one minute, my installation should be ready. So we keep here the default settings. So and, that, and that's it. So the next step, we install the tree package. And uh, we can uh, set up the time zone and you see the time in my case is correct. So the first step is uh, uh, is done and we have a ready uh, system. Um, because this is a, a public infrastructure uh, as a service droplet. So uh, at this moment, uh, I have a public uh, IP and this public ID can be accessed from anywhere. And um, to do basic security stuff, we can use um, tool which is pre-installed which comes pre-installed in the ubuntu 18 uh, installation it's a tool called uncomplicated firewall and um, we can uh, set some basic uh, settings so uh, we deny all incoming uh, requests and we set the rule also to allow all outcoming settings i think that's basically also a default value um, and the only thing that I need is uh, we allow SSH to communicate with this uh, server. And then we look uh, at what we have uh, added and we have added uh, the HH SS, uh, SS, SSH part. And then with this, we can enable uh, the firewall. So, and with, with status, we can check, okay, uh, firewall is active and only part uh, 22 should be uh, available from the outside. So these are some basics, uh, basic steps, um, which you should do when you work on a, uh, public uh, server. So uh, with this, we have done all our preparation and um, because, and then we can install the fabric related part. So um, fabric is uh, built on Docker um, and uh, this 
because of this, we have to install first a uh, Docker environment, the Docker environment, and uh, all these commands here uh, um, are from the uh, official documentation. Uh, and uh, we can copy these commands and uh, install these uh, requirements. So we add the official GPG key. And we uh, add something to our uh, repository, to the apt repository. And with this, we check if everything is um, right. Okay, so, and then we can, we can uh, use the command up get install. And we have to install three packages, uh, the Docker community edition, the Docker community edition CLI, and the, these container IO package. Okay, so, and then we can check the Docker version. And you see Docker version 19 uh, is installed on this machine. Yeah. Um, if you want, you can uh, run the classic Hello World example of Docker uh, to see if Docker is really working. Yep. And you see uh, it works. So um, hello from Docker. And uh, you can see also the image. When you call Docker images, you see all installed images on your machine. And you see um, the Docker, Docker run command uh, was looking for this, for this image. And uh, because of that, that the, image, that the machine is new and the image wasn't installed, it pulled the image from the Docker repository and uh, run, and then you see this again. So, okay, that's all about uh, the installation of Docker. And Docker should be uh, fine and running. The next important part is uh, Docker Compose. And um, that's also very easy to install. Um, the documentation, the official documentation is also here on the Docker homepage. Um, you can use, uh, you have uh, to use the curl command for this. Um, uh, and the curl command is uh, the default installed uh, on this Ubuntu 18. So we see this. And we have to set the uh, proper right for the Docker uh, composer. That's it. And then we can check again Docker compose version. And we see uh, Docker Compose, Compose version 125 uh, is uh, installed. So that's not the, the newest version, I think. Uh, the newest version uh, is uh, 126. Uh, but uh, in my tests, I tested the, these installations with this uh, version. And uh, that's the reason why I choose uh, 25. So um, Docker Compose should also uh, installed. And um, the next step is that uh, Docker, uh, uh, as a fabric is uh, built in Go. And when we are going to use, uh, when we are going to uh, make chain code and we can do it in, uh, in Go, but we can do it also in other languages. So uh, in uh, Node.js or in Java. But I think the um, fabric has a primary language for every part. And uh, I think for the chain code development, it's Go, but that's only my interpretation. I'm not sure if this is right or not. And on the other side, uh, we have for the client side. You are right. Side, uh, Go is the default language for chain code and for the iPod fabric. So you are yeah. right. 
Okay, thank you. And um, also for the client side, when we're talking about the client, then we're trying to access um, the ledger uh, with uh, Node.js. And uh, I think Node.js is also the default client uh, for uh, access the ledger uh, for um, applications. Uh, and that's the reason why we try this install, to install this here. Okay, so um, to install Go on this machine, it's also uh, maybe the same uh, steps. So we have to adopt the uh, apt repository and then we can install uh, Golang 1.12. Uh, uh, so, and that's important uh, according to the documentation, to so the official documentation for uh, Fabric 1.4. Four, yeah, uh, the Go version uh, 1.12 um, is required for this. So we need this version. version. So as you can see, it's very simple to follow uh, these instructions and, uh, and there is no uh, problem, I think. So, so it's very easy to install uh, the steps and it should also be very fast to do this. One of the important part when we uh, install uh, Go, so we have to uh, set the Go path. Uh, the, and uh, for this we can uh, put this to our profile file. And uh, to load this profile new, and then we can uh, use Go version. And you see, we have installed Go version uh, 1.2. So uh, yeah, that's for the Go installation. And uh, the second part is the, uh, the next part is the Node.js part. So uh, Node.js uh, is uh, um, supported with two versions, uh, I think. Uh, the one version is uh, 10 and the second version is uh, 12. And uh, now we install Node.js 10, the current release of 10. So we can also use this uh, the curl command and we uh, this curl command uh, load uh, file down uh, the node source setup and uh, we can give this file uh, access rights and then we can install we can execute this file and uh, and you see the app repository will uh, will uh, uh, update it and now we can install the Node.js part. And you see we will uh, use uh, 1021 and with Node uh, version, we see uh, the Node 21 version is installed. So all these um, steps are from the official documentation uh, from, from the site. And yeah. So the next part, with this, we should have installed all the preparation uh, which we need to install finally the Fabric uh, Docker images. And um, for this, I create a new directory. Uh, called Fabric and switch into this directory. And then we can use the curl command uh, to install, uh, to load all the Docker images. And um, this is uh, one uh, uh, point uh, because uh, we have to use, when we are going to use one for six version. Uh, so, and for this we have to, uh, because 
there there's the new uh, uh, 2.0 version and when you use uh, the command without the the, the last uh, parameters here then you will install the the current uh, version the 2.0 version or 2.1 version it depends on on that what is really the uh, the last last version which is published so uh, to get a specific version uh, we have to set uh, these three parameters here and uh, the parameter stands for for a specific uh, position and uh, the first the first part here is uh, the fabric version so when we want fabric 146 uh, then it must be the first uh, part here the second part uh, is for the Fabric Certified Authority. And the third part here is for third party Docker images. And third party Docker images is something like Kafka, Zookeeper, or uh, CouchDB. So we have to do this. And in this step also the fabric samples will be uh, cloned from the official repo. Uh, and yeah, so that could take it's now some minutes um, until all uh, Docker images are loaded. But as you can see, it's really fast. Uh, and that's the reason why I use um, a public infrastructure uh, provider because of their uh, really good uh, internet connections. So if I will do it at home, then <laughs> it will take very long. And uh, the current release now uh, is 147. So as for, to for today, uh, I have seen that there's a new version. Uh, it's not the 6146, it's uh, 147 is the current version. So. And if all images are downloaded, we can check it and we can, we should put uh, also the path to the for examples pin directory to our profile uh, that we can uh, that we don't have problems with uh, with the path. And after this step, there is, uh, I think it's the last step, yes. The last step is uh, to install the Fabric CA binaries. And with this binaries, we are able to, um, uh, in the administrator part, for example, we can access uh, the Fabric uh, CA server and we can interact with the server. So. I think we can also inst install this and then, uh, but that's a uh, work for later. We will not use it today. And then uh, you have everything installed. Now it's ready, I see. So we can, we see, then we call Docker images and, and you can see all images are downloaded so we can see uh, CouchDB, uh, we can see Kafka, Zookeeper, Peers, Orders, and so on. So um, yeah and now we put this to the path. Um, yeah, as you can see, I use uh, Vim or VI for, for this, but you can also use Nano if you want. So that's uh, something of your choice. Uh, but I think VI is a little bit easier to use for me. So that's the reason why I use uh, VI to edit uh, some uh, scripts. But for more development, um, I use, um, maybe I, sh I can show this a little bit later or, or next uh, Saturday, I use uh, Visual Studio Code uh, with the developer remote extension where we 
Well, and with this, I can connect to the uh, fabric to the to the server, and then I can work uh, in uh, Visual Studio Code, and I can uh, edit all the files, and uh, it's a little bit easier to do it. But I know for the exam, uh, you have to be uh, used uh, with the VI or Nano, uh, and yeah, so okay, that's okay. So and now. We're going to install the last part, the uh, Fabric CA, CA binary. Um, these, are also, these steps are also from the official documentation. Uh, and also install this. These are some uh, requirements. Uh, dependencies for Ubuntu. And then uh, with this command, go get, uh, we will install uh, the binaries for Fabric CA server and Fabric CA client. So this takes, um, I think you can, uh, uh, set in here the, the uh, verbose com uh, parameter, then you will see here a little bit output that takes uh, one or two minutes uh, to download these, these uh, files. And when it's done, uh, we can check uh, uh, if, uh, if, the, if the fabric binaries are installed. So the, the default installation path is uh, in your home directory and in the uh, go for in the go directory and with go source git, github.com uh, this will be the default uh, directory where all these packages will be installed now and with the tree command we can inspect this uh, as you can see here the d uh, par parameter is uh, only for directory so all files are left and the L uh, is also useful uh, with the L parameter. You can uh, control the level, the deep of the uh, wake for sieve operation uh, when you uh, look into inspect um, some folders. So, okay. Now we should have the, the, uh, the, the go. Uh, base directory and when we try the street command now and you see uh, the structure so and that's the reason why i have installed uh, in the first step uh, the tree uh, uh, program uh, because of this it's very useful to see the folder structures here and it's also useful when it comes to the crypto material when we look uh, uh, which crypto material is uh, is uh, available for peers or for orders and so on and so you will uh, have a good overview uh, over uh, the things. So then we have to, this also to the path. And then, when, then we can check the client. You see the key uh, auto completion is working, so the path must be set correctly. And when we can check, uh, we can see one for six. And I think we are ready. So I think these are the steps um, to install um, fabric installation. So from scratch. So when we look back, so they are, uh, and you see these are the steps. So we have, we have uh, some basic operations to uh, secure our droplet and you update the operating system. Uh, and then we have uh, some steps for the fabric related part, part. And now we are ready to use uh, fabric as a blockchain. And uh, for this, um, there is uh, in the fabric directory, we have 
also installed their favorite samples. Uh, this step is done uh, during the installation of the um, yeah in, during the installation of the Docker images. And in this in this step, uh, also the favorite samples uh, are installed. And when we switch into this, and we can see. Um, the folder structure, uh, which we know. Yeah, and um, now everything is installed. And now we can try if uh, Fabric is working. And for this, um, I will use the build your first network script. So that script comes with the basic installation and uh, you can find a lot of documentation about this script and how this is working. And uh, of course you can learn a lot from this script and the combination uh, on what you can do with this. But when you install this um, at the first time, there is a, a, a kind of organization. And by default, there will be an organization which have one order in this organization and uh, two, organi two, two another organizations and org one and then org two. And um, every organization will have two peers, yeah? peer zero and peer one. And also in the org uh, two, you will have peer zero and peer one. And the default uh, chain code, uh, which is installed by, by this example, is the example uh, underline 02 chain code. This is a simple chain code um, where we can switch uh, two values between the characters A and P. So, and uh, the endorsement policy is set, uh, the, is set in this way. So, uh, because uh, that's important uh, when you try to test it and when you try uh, to, to tear down uh, one organization, for example, and then when you try to invoke um, a, chain a transaction, then it will not work because of this uh, endorsement policy. So to, to understand what happened uh, in this example, it's useful when you uh, do, when you create an overview of this and that's what, what is here so um, but we can with the script we can um, start also a certified authority for the organization one and also for the organization two and we can also um, uh, start uh, or select uh, couch db as a, as a state as a state database as a state database and um, we will also have a cli cli container uh, with uh, and with this container, we can interact uh, with this uh, blockchain uh, sample. So this is a this is the big picture, and uh, when we first try this example, so um, we can uh, I will do it with the uh, Tmux. Uh, terminal multiplexer. So this is, should be also installed by default. Uh, so we have on Ubuntu. So, and with this command, with Tmux new and the uh, parameter S, uh, we can create a new session. Uh, and this session is called favorite. And with this command, the session is created. Uh, we have also attached this session. And we see here this green uh, field. And when we uh, in this uh, Tmux session, um, we can use multiple uh, panels. And to, to create new panels, we can split the existing pan panel. And uh, to, do, uh, to do this, we uh, have to set different commands. So in all commands, um, Start starts with control with the control key and B, and then <clears throat> you have uh, another key. So to split the uh, the current uh, panel in two uh, panels, then we have to use the quote uh, key. And 
we can do this, uh, control D, end quote. And you see now we have two panels in one session. So, but uh, you, you, as you can see, I have only one terminal session. So I don't have uh, I term on Mac uh, or something like this. Uh, that's only one, one session. And uh, I can split this in a horizontal, in a horizontal way and also in a vertical way. And to jump uh, between, to, or to switch between these two panels, you can use another command. So also the, you, can, you have to use also control and B and uh, Q. So P and you see zero, control B, Q, zero, one. And this is zero, one, and then you are here. So when you put this one to, to demonstrate this would be one, and you can see. And um, we, can, we can do this. So, and when we want to leave this, yeah, we can make this command, yeah, control P D for detach, control P D. And now we are uh, outside from this session. And with Tmux LS, uh, you can see there's one session, you can have multiple sessions here. And uh, we have, this is our session, uh, the fabric session. And with this, with this system, you can have uh, different um, screens. So, and you can organize it uh, for your uh, personal need. And you can switch uh, from one session to another session. And now when we are going to uh, attach this, this session, we can uh, use the command uh, Tmux and then a shorter version of the words attach and the parameter T and the name of the uh, session. And now we are in this session. And as you can see, we have here the, the, the edge top um, uh, screen and here the uh, normal screen. Okay, so. So that's how you can uh, create with Tmux uh, uh, a new session, how you can split it and how you can leave it and how you can uh, reattach uh, to this session. And now let's start uh, our build your first network example. So for this, we switch into this uh, uh, directory and uh, We need the first network, of course. So, yeah, and with the help command, uh, you can see all the, uh, so, and <laughs> that's, that's a problem. So uh, you, you cannot scroll uh, with, uh, with a mouse or a touchpad. Uh, to scroll uh, in this Tmux session, you have to use um, also a command, uh, Control P, and uh, that depends a little bit on the machine, I think. So I use a Mac, and with on the Mac, uh, you have to uh, you have to uh, use the key Control P and the FN key and the arrow top and down, and in this way you can scroll here, and you see it on the uh, Right top here, the position, and so can screen. So, and to leave this this kind of uh, mo mode, you have to to press escape. And now it's gone here, and then you can use your command. So, um, as you can see here, you will have a lot of um, Docker Composer uh, files, and they come in different flavors. And you can do a lot uh, with this uh, uh, script. And, um, but 
everything uh, is done, I think, in two steps. The first step is to create the, uh, the uh, network crypto uh, material. Uh, and the second step is to start uh, the network. And to create the uh, crypto material, uh, we can use the, the build your first network script, uh, which the, which the, com oh, okay. which the uh, command uh, generate. And when you do this in this way, uh, then um, this works and uh, you will uh, create a channel uh, which is called my channel. And when you want the other channel, uh, a name channel, then you have to uh, take this parameter C for channel and you can uh, give the channel your own name. So now we try this. And you see um, all the crypto material is now uh, created. Um, so, and you see this. So the crypto config uh, folder uh, shows you that you have uh, one org one orderer and the organizer organization that's called example.com and you have two p organizations uh, and these organizations uh, uh, are called org one example.com and org two example.com and with the tree command you can uh, inspect this and see yeah, how is the structure from this uh, folders so, but uh, we will don't look too much in this uh, configuration and in this uh, installation um, field because we are here as a developer and the developer point of view is a little bit different uh, from the administrator point of view. And, but uh, one requirement to develop uh, a, fabric install a fabric application is to have running a running fabric network. And that's the reason why we do a, we need the installation. So uh, we have to test our application, we have to test our chain code, and um, that's the reason why we should uh, familiar with the build your first uh, network example. And then we can uh, start the network, and this is basically done uh, with the up parameter with the up command, and we have to call. Uh, also the C parameter with the channel. And when we do this, uh, the network will uh, now start. And um, as you can see, there, 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 uh, the channels, uh, the, the Docker images are started, the channels, uh, the channel is created, um, the order is started, the organizations are started, and the chain code will be installed and the chain code will be also tested. And this, this takes some minutes. Uh, and with this basic setup, uh, we can uh, use the CLI container uh, to interact uh, with this uh, example. And in this way, you can uh, play your first round with uh, Fabric, and you can uh, look how is this working and um, can and try to understand how, what is going on. And um, yeah, I think, I think the examples are very good. You can uh, learn a lot from these examples and you can also uh, switch to the uh, samples on GitHub and you will find these examples here. But 
uh, when we go to GitHub, uh, you have to be uh, careful because this is the master branch and in the master branch, uh, this is the, the, the latest branch. So what we need is the release 1.4. So we have to switch always to the 1.4. And this is basically uh, the version which we have installed now, but I think this is 147. And, and here you can see also uh, the explanations for this. And now, yeah, so all good. Um, and it seems to work. So now we can uh, look um, at Docker PS. Um, we can see, okay, a lot of container are running. And we compare it with our uh, picture here. So, right, and we can see here the CLA container is running. We see the order is running, this one. So we see uh, PNOL org one is running, the P is running. Uh, we see uh, P one org org one is running. And the same for the organization two, P null, P zero and uh, P one. And here you see um, chain code container. So uh, chain code is running in uh, own container and this is called the chain code container. And you can see uh, through the installations, through the script, uh, the chain code uh, example 02 uh, with the name my chain code is installed. And um, you can see here that it's installed on uh, org1 pianul, yeah? org2 pianul, and org2 p1, but not on org1 p1. So, uh, that uh, is a little bit interesting. Um, and when we try to write a Node.js application, uh, then we will uh, have a little bit problems with this configuration because uh, the Node.js application use uh, in the gateway class a discovery service. And this discovery service is looking for the peer uh, one in org one. And sometimes there is an error. So, but we can uh, adopt the script uh, that we have also the chain code installed and p of one or one uh, that this uh, that this uh, problem will not uh, happen so now this works so but we can use also uh, all docker commands to see it a little bit uh, in a more compact way so uh, as i have mentioned every, Docker is heavily used uh, in Fabric, so you have to be familiar with uh, Docker. Um, and uh, but you don't need so much commands from Docker, but uh, you need a few commands. And um, there are good uh, Docker cheat sheets um, around the internet. So when you Google for Docker cheat sheets, you will find um, a lot of uh, documentation to this. And then with these commands, uh, you can. Uh, yeah, uh, th th this is a, a good reference and you can uh, uh, learn from this command. So now this is running. Um, so, and um, so, okay, this is couch to be, but so um, because of the time, um, I will jump here to a uh, to test something. So, um, okay, uh, the system is running. So, but now how we can interact with this with this uh, blockchain? And um, for this, we can use uh, the CLI container. And when we when we try to uh, go into a CLI container, uh, you have to use this command. So, with the Docker exec command, we can switch into a running container. Uh, the uh, IT uh, uh, parameter here, uh, it, it means that uh, this, this session is interactive. So it means that you stay in this session. 
then you can uh, say the uh, container, uh, which you will exec, and then the command, which you will uh, exec in this container. So, and what we need is the hash uh, as a command line. And uh, with this command, this is a basic command uh, to access uh, any Docker container. And with this, we can switch into this container. And now you can see here, we are now inside the uh, CLI container. And this container is, um, is a tool set container uh, with, um, which is prepared to interact uh, with the with the blockchain. So, and when we are going, when we try to query the, now our, our blockchain, so we want to know the value of A or the value of P, uh, then you have to uh, use the query command. So, and when you start with this, so it's important to understand uh, which chain code is installed and how this chain code is working so that you can play with this. So in the fabric exam sample samples, there are a lot of uh, chain code uh, examples. So, and when you install this, you have first, I think it's a good idea to, to analyze the chain code itself so that you know what is, what is the aim of this chain code, uh, what, you, what, what you can do with this chain code. And then you can uh, uh, play with this, with this examples. So, and uh, to query uh, the, the letter, uh, we have to use a command. And this command is called peer chain code query. And that's pretty straightforward. And with the C command, you can say uh, which channel you can query. Um, in my scripts, I have uh, I use something, uh, sometimes uh, environment variables uh, to reduce the, the, the amount of, uh, of uh, yeah, the paths to reduce the, the length of the paths and so on. So you can here use this environment, this, this variable, um, uh, or you can write also uh, channel one. Uh, and then uh, you have to call the name of the chain code. So we have to say which channel, yeah, which chain code, and which command. Yeah. And you see, this is a, a C in a uppercase, and this is in lowercase. And then this is the command. Uh, and the command is query and query A. So, but this depends really on the chain code. So, and that, that's so important to understand first the chain code. So, okay. Now we have this. So we can check it. This is also an important command, print env. So you can see your environment variables. Yeah. Let me use grab. Uh, this is channel. And you see, yeah, we have an environment variable. Channel name is slash channel one. So, and with this, yeah, we can call here chain code. So I will copy this. It's From and you see the value is there. And we create B. You see this. And that's how you can query this letter. And uh, with this command, print n web core, you can see some important commands and uh, no, not commands, environment variables. So all fabric uh, environment var variables will have uh, in front of this core. Which, and, and you have to look at this variables because these are paths to the um, keys, to the uh, certificates, and so on. And uh, when we oh. and we and now uh, we are on peer zero org one example.com. So this this is the default uh, 
configuration. These are default uh, environment variables because in the Docker Composer file, there, uh, these environment var variables we, uh, are set. So, and when, when we try to query um, the uh, ARC2, then we have to change these uh, variables yeah, to the proper path of the ARC2. And in, and in this uh, example, uh, we have to replace the uh, ARC1 with ARC2 in these variables. And then uh, we are, uh, and then we can query uh, PS0 or 2 and can check if the, if the value is also uh, on the second uh, organization. So um, now the time is running. Um, yeah. yeah, so I will skip this. Also, so. How did you and if it shows and you can right. yeah. exit yes, this, uh, to leave the, the uh, yeah. CLI container and with the command uh, uh, control P detach, you can uh, exit this session, but the, the network is running, but uh, you can inspect the network as well in this process so without the uh, session then you can see also here that the network is running and you can also use the CLI command from this position and you don't have to use the multiplexer for this but uh, it's useful when you when you want to have this is the split view or when you have a background task which is running and uh, you don't want to or you lose your your SSH SSH connection and then the task will run will run in the background so um, I think we are hmm, done with this hour. So I have to say thank you. Uh, I hope uh, that you have uh, that you that you have learned something in this session. And um, 